Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm pleased to share my time this afternoon with the member from Richmond, Arthabasca. Well, it gives me great pleasure to speak on Bill C-29, the Budget Implementation Act. Seven months after tabling the budget, Canadians are beginning to recognize the consequences, and the picture isn't pretty. Being it's Halloween, it's appropriate that we refer to the budget as downright scary. It's like a vampire sucking the blood out of most Canadians. The Liberals love spinning the budget into a huge spider web to catch people. Small businesses are upset, thinking it was Frankenstein that has come back from the dead. Even with the low Canadian dollar, these Liberals have generated 20,000 fewer manufacturing jobs in this country and I thought for a, motive, a moment, Madam Speaker, it was Houdini, because these jobs in the country have just vanished. In my province of Saskatchewan, we have lost 4,000 jobs in August over the same period from last year. And the trend continued in September, with 6,000 fewer people working during the same period as the year before. We have 42,000 unemployed in Saskatchewan currently, Doug Elliott, the publisher of SAS Trends Monitor, says going back to 1986, that is the highest number of unemployment in the month of August. Saskatchewan could very well see its first year of negative job growth since the year 2001. And that is scary. We haven't seen the unemployment levels like this in over two decades. Small business owners don't want the trick or treat, they want an opportunity. They know how best to grow the economy. These Liberals promised a reduction in their tax from 11 to 9. We have yet to see that. And then we have Dracula with his fangs out, ready to suck more out of the economy with their proposed carbon tax. This dark cloud hanging over this haunted house will not help with job creation in this country. It's hard to suck blood out of a stone, Madam Speaker, but this Liberal government seems determined to try. The carbon tax was never mentioned a year ago during the election, and now we know it always was behind one of their trap doors. To quote Marilyn Braun Poland of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, the state of business health in this country has deteriorated. Hiring plans remain very weak, with only 10% 10% of business owners looking to hire full-time, while at the same time, 17% are foreseeing layoffs. This is deeply concerning. As we head into the holiday season, where generally more opportunity exists, mainly though for part-time employment. Retail spending is effectively flat in our province this year, a broad category that includes everything from automobiles to clothing to furniture and food. And we adjust for inflation. That means actually that the total sales volumes in the province has declined by more than 2% over last year at this time. Now, even the finance minister was quoted as saying Canadians should get used to the so-called job churn. No wonder our youth were upset last week at the prime minister during a briefing. Our youth right now in this country are experiencing record unemployment. And it's not what was promised to these millennials by the Liberals a year ago. It was all about sunny ways. And now we find out the clouds have rolled in and this government has no answers. The full moon, though, has returned. The Liberals have gone back to their old ways of pay and play. Haven't they heard from their previous skeletons in the closet, Madam Speaker? Well, there's more ghosts and goblins, as the Bank of Canada has determined more bad news for this economy, downgrading the country's growth outlook yet once again. Ted Mallet, who is the CFIB's chief economist, he says employment is a big area of concern. While employment plans tend to experience, as we all know, seasonal fluctuation, this October's downward turn was sharper than we've ever seen it in the past. Investment plans have also dropped to a post-recession low. Nearly 50% of Saskatchewan small businesses plan to freeze or even cut salaries. 
We haven't factored in the cost of a CPP increase or the much talked about carbon tax. This is more evidence that now is not the time for this carbon tax. And I guess it's like CETA. The Liberals played a disappearing act. Now they want to be Casper, the friendly ghost. But I want to remind this House, it was our Conservative government that did all the heavy lifting of this agreement with CETA. While the Liberals promised a modest deficit of $10 billion to stimulate the economy, it looks like they were dead wrong. They continue to throw more deficit dollars at this problem, Madam Speaker. Let's remember a year ago, the Liberals promised they could simply spend their way out into prosperity. Well, by most measures, I would say Canadian families are worse off than they were a year ago. Good jobs are in short supply, and the vast majority of these new jobs created under this government is really part-time, which explains why the weekly earnings for the average worker in this country have lowered. On the weekend, I was home in my riding of Saskatoon Grasswood, and I had an opportunity to talk to several young people. Many said they had two and three part-time jobs just to make ends meet. Saskatchewan people, as you always know, have always had the work ethic, but there comes a time when they see no light at the end of the tunnel. Instead of growing the middle class, they are breaking the middle class. Just last week, the parliamentary budget officer confirmed that our conservative budget would have resulted in a $2.9 billion surplus for the years of 2015-16. But we all know, Madam Speaker, a surplus is not in the Liberal vocabulary. They continue to run massive debts. Where it stops, nobody knows. When will this circus stop? The child care benefit will not be indexed now until the year 2020. The PBO has estimated that indexing, in fact, enriching the CCB, will cost over $42 million over the next five years. So where, then, will the Liberals get this money? This program would cost more than double the original budgeted if indexed over this five-year period. The current government reminds me of the show way back called The Munsters. It was televised back then in black and white. Madam Speaker, I ask this current government to step out of the dark ages and realize you are spending our children's and our grandchildren's money with no hope of ever balancing the budget. Thank you. I just want to remind the member to address the, uh, the comments to the chair and not to the government. Uh, so, on that note, questions and comments, questions and commentaires, l'honorable secrétaire parlementaire pour la ministre des Finances. Madam Speaker, and for all of those who are listening and watching us, what's really scary, Madam Speaker, is that the Conservatives just don't get it, Madam Speaker. They voted against the, they voted against the middle class tax cut. They don't believe in climate change. They don't believe in investing in Canadians. They don't believe in a plan for growth, Madam Speaker. That's really scary. That's why people watching should be scared of, of, of members who voted against a tax cut for the middle class. Madam Speaker, our plan to invest in growth in this country, invest in Canadian families, invest in innovation, invest in infrastructure was not only applauded by Canadians. It was applauded around the world. The IMF director said that she wished the plan of Canada would go viral around the world. The Economist this week said Canada's example to the world in their front page. Madam Speaker, my question is simple. Why would the member for which I have enormous respect did vote against the middle class tax cut for Canadians in this country? The Honourable Member for Saskatoon Grasswood. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank our co colleague across the way. It's interesting, they have talked about nine out of every 10 Canadians benefiting, but I should also ask, because I'm a former sportscaster in my city, they eliminated the sports tax rebate. They eliminated the arts tax rebate. These were middle class that our previous government believed in. Our families cherished those two in particular. It gave chance for kids to get off the couch and participate. Those are two programs that are sorely needed to come back in this country right now. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? 
The Honourable Member for Halliburton, Kawatha Lakes Brock. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I do appreciate uh, my colleagues' words. It was, they were very haunting, very bone chilling, some of the uh, statistics he was uh, bringing up. And uh, quite spooky when you look at the horizon we have above us. I'm from Ontario, he's from Saskatchewan, Speaker. Um, you know, we see that the, the same staffers from Queen's Park that ran the McGuinty Win Liberals have moved all the way up to Ottawa. We paid their expenses, and uh, you're welcome. Um, so, looking at their decade, their 12 years of massive li uh, Liberal government spending, more taxes, more government red tape, jobs leaving. Uh, I know he's from Saskatchewan, but uh, he just listed a bunch of uh, stats about how his province is hurting too. And maybe he could tell us, uh, Speaker, through you, um, how and why this type of thinking does not work. The our member for Saskatoon Grasswood. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank my colleague. Yes, our province was driving the engine of this country for years, and now we're not. We're hurting along with Alberta, along with Newfoundland and Labrador. We have seen the commodity prices go down, but at the same time, this government wants to impose a carbon tax. Mm -hmm. Do you think our previous government in 2008 would impose against the automobilers of uh, Ontario, the manufacturers? No, we did the right thing back then. We propped them up because we knew the economy of Ontario was in serious trouble back in 2008 True. and 9. True. So here we are. They want to employ, impose a carbon tax against our province and the rest of Canadians at a time simply when people of Canada and my province of Saskatchewan simply can't afford it. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon West. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank uh, my colleague uh, uh, for his comments and a fellow Saskatooner. Um, I guess what I, I would like my honourable colleague to, to talk about is that right now we are uh, trying to ad address an ever-increasing child poverty rate. The last 10 years of the previous government, this rate has increased. And I'm wondering if you could comment about why today we find ourselves with a poverty rate for children of over 11 per cent. The honourable member for Saskatoon Grasswood. I want to thank the colleague from Saskatoon West. Her former uh, job as uh, director of United Way in our city, and she did a lot of work helping our community for years and years and years. She knows, as well as everyone in our city, we do have a, a, a poverty issue with children in our in our city and our province right now. The food banks are used more than they've ever been used before. But with a strong economy, Madam Speaker, we can hope that this uh, poverty issue can get turned away in our province. Thank you.